If Jesus came back, what would he be most disappointed in? Mega church pastors with their ridiculous wealth and still begging for more money from the congregation. Cleansing of the temple too. Church sheltering pedophiles in his name. I'd say pretty much everything the church does, or has done in his name to be honest, from the bible Jesus hated shows of wealth, and don't think he would appreciate terms like your eminence and your excellency being used for any other humans. Personally, I think it would be the twisting of what taking God's name in vain means. And I realize that I'm flirting with doing it even as I type this, so let me reiterate that this is just my guess. I do not speak for God, and neither does anyone else. Taking God's name in vain doesn't mean saying goddammit. It means putting words in God's mouth. It means telling people what God wants. What he would think of something. What he would say or do. It means, in short, taking the mantle of God's authority, and thus his name, upon yourself and using it to profane or even evil ends. I believe that almost every major ill the modern church is guilty of can be traced back to this. Things like, harnessing religious identity and issues for political gain. Harnessing religious identity and perceived authority for material gain. Looking at you, televangelists. Telling people what is or is not sexual sin between consenting individuals. Telling people that other worshippers of Christ aren't Christians. Pretending like we have a solid understanding of who God will and will not let into heaven. Pretending we know when the end times are coming or what exactly they'll look like. Saying things like God put ex corrupt leader in power so it's wrong to question them. Saying things like God sent that hurricane to punish X. Basically attributing any bad thing happening to God's will as a pathetic excuse for not doing our duty as Christians to heal the harm it caused. Telling people God hates them or won't forgive them. Telling people that while Christ is the only way to God, we, whoever we may be, are the only way to Christ. Telling people that being in possession of and intellectually accepting a certain list of facts is a hard prerequisite to salvation. The list goes on and on. I think a lot of people, and this is an eternal peril of any religion, which I can't imagine, will ever end, as long as religion lives on, lose sight of the fact that you can believe in God and have utter faith in his being without assuming that you know exactly what it is he wants of you. There is a massive difference between saying any of the above and propending it with I believe. It seems like a semantic difference, but it's incredibly important because it introduces doubt. Doubt not in God, but in ourselves. In our judgments and our faculties, which any honest individual will tell. You are fallible and tend to lead us astray. There are things that are generally safe to do with abandon, for Christ's example, to love, in the sense of agape, to forgive, to heal, to provide, to encourage. These are things that are clearly beneficial, even if we are wrong, about whether God told us to do them. The question that many of us have stopped asking is a crucial one. Would this still be the right thing to do, even if I'm wrong about my exegesis? Or, to put it in a slightly more accessible manner, would this still be right and good if God hadn't told me to do it? Because a lot of times, we are wrong about what God told us to do. We are deceived, or we deceive ourselves. And we end up hurting people because we falsely believe that we do so at God's command. And it's only after the damage is done that we wake up to the fact that we have served Tash in the name of Aslan, if we ever realize that at all. How the church used his name for war, genocide, enslavement, and profit slash wealth. The fact that the world thinks that he's a six feet tall hipster looking white guy with long wavy hair. Imagine if he's a short fat, balding guy with a wonky nose. He'd probably be like some 5, 2 feet Arabian bloke with long greasy hair, no? Like a somewhat slim Arabian Ron Jeremy. Definitely priests molesting children, TV evangelists basically lying to people to get money for their own gain, the hatred that Christians have for gays and everyone that sins, the fact that humans destroyed what religion was supposed to be and turned it into something it was never intended to be. We forgot the most important thing and turned religion into a group of people hating people that are different than us. 1 Peter 4 colon 8 ilt and before all things to one another having the earnest love because the love shall cover a multitude of sins. Anti-Semitics. 
he would be disappointed in the Christians, really the anti-Semitic ones, because Jesus wasn't really Christians. He brought it about, but really after he died. Yeah, he was Jewish. Then his brother took up his teachings and got stoned for it. That Christians seem more inclined to judge and condemn rather than loving their neighbors. I'm a Christian myself, and I agree with you here. There are way too many Christians that have a terrible attitude about it all. I promise that some of us are good. Probably all the weeds I let grow since last time I hired him. This comment made my day. Brit here, it took me a minute to work out what you meant because we don't have many gardeners by that name. Lack of evolution of sandals. Dude Jesus would think Crocs us will laugh. What are those? Saith the Lord. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe.